So I would like to start by, like I said, presenting the two sides of uh, Keshet, Keren Shituf Stormim, Donor Advice Fund Israel. I am sharing a presentation with you. And I will start by telling you a little bit about the road that we've taken in the last couple of years. I have founded the Jewish, Jewish Funders Network in Israel 11 years ago. And when we started, we really wanted to build a philanthropic community in Israel of Israelis and of donors from overseas who give in Israel. It was really important for us to create a sense of community, to give knowledge, to be able to link people together, to create collaborations and really promote Israeli philosophy. So we have done so in the last uh, um, 10 years and we've really um, created a community of funders there are 140 Israeli uh, families who are part of JFN, and there are um, hundreds of people who give in Israel who also connect through the JFN network. Um, when we looked, when we had a conversation about promoting philosophy in Israel, there were several um, barriers that we've noticed. Um, some of them are cultural, but, a lot, but many of them were uh, infrastructure related. So after we uh, explored this, um, I would say, landscape of viable um, tools for philanthropy, and after working very hard, mostly through um, the Center for Law and Philanthropy, the Institute for Law and Philanthropy in Tel Aviv University, and the Committed to Give Network, which for years are looking for ways to expand the number of Israelis who are joining uh, the philanthropic community. Um, they have done a very thorough job in exploring the different tools um, that can promote uh, philanthropy in Israel. And after realizing that the donor advice fund model that exists in the United States, Canada, the UK and Australia is the most, um, I would say the right tool for the Israeli community, for the Israeli film public community, we, they have, we have approached them and we said, let's try to have a conversation with the tax authority. For two years, we had an ongoing conversation with the tax authority. That is why I mentioned Sue Dickman, because the, through the whole process, the information on how to build it and the way to structure it was very, very helpful. And after two years, the tax authority understood that what we're trying to do in opening a donor advice fund in Israel is really expand the number of donors and engage um, new donors in smart professional philanthropy. And we've come up with that model that we are now going to show you. So turning a daf, daf is a page in, uh, in Hebrew, in Israeli philanthropy. How does it work? Um, and then how does it work for you as a, an Israeli donor? And how does it work for you as a fiscal sponsor model for American foundations? First of all, let me just say for the Israeli part, this works within the current legislation on Israeli uh, tax law. So in Israel, there's a 35% refund. It's not a deduction since our tax system is different on a donation and right now the cap on giving is nine million shekels you probably everyone wonders why we do not agree with this um number so we are trying to push it up we have a meeting about it tomorrow and i will let all of you know if we have succeeded this um, is a uh, maya this is an annual cap correct it's an annual cap yes um, it's also, there's a bottom to it where you can only give up to 30% of your yearly, yearly taxable income. This is another law that the tax authority has. We have, we have a plan to tackle all of these issues, but we're going to do them one by one and not try to change everything at once. So we're starting with the 9 million and then we'll try to go over to the other issues. I'm going to relate to investments. So just so everyone knows, um, the law in Israel allows NGOs to invest money in the, um, in the market up to a 20% um, um, shares. This is the, the most that uh, the tax authority is, authoriz is authorizing NGOs to invest in equity. Uh, the rest is bonds. 
So the model of the donor advice fund, how is it similar to the United States and how is it different? Um, just like in the United States, a donor can give a donation at any given time during a tax year of the full amount of the 9 million shekels and get a receipt for the 46 Aleph tax status, which is the equivalent of a 501c3, and give the tax refund all at the same time. When a donation is being um, held at Keshet, the donor has two things that they can make decisions on. The first one, of course, along the years is to make grant recommendation to um, any NGO that the donor wants to. Of course, since we have a 46 in Israel, we can only support other organizations that have 46. However, the tax authority did acknowledge the fact that new organizations um, need to start somehow and cannot wait for two years for donations. So 15% is allowed to donate to a non-46 organization in the beginning a few years of, of the setting up the NGO. On the same time, a donor can make a decision whether or not they want to manage their fund in an investment firm. We work currently with IBI, it's an investor to legitimate uh, um, investment firm in Israel. And if you choose to do so, you can decide at what level of risk you want your fund to be managed. You can either keep it in cash, keep it at on 100% bonds, 10% uh, equity, 90% bonds, or 20% equity and 80% bonds. Of course, that there is, um, the, it's a risk, but it's not a high risk because 20% equity for, for most of the people, it's not a, a serious um, risk for the funds. So we hope that during the years, um, donors will be able to have an endowment that is uh, growing an evergreen foundation. They can plan their giving according to their timeline and by choosing their own um, directions and by getting the best advice they can get from us on the Israeli NGO landscape and the decision of making the donation by um, um, making a with, by separating it from the decision about the grant allows funders for a much more relaxed and enjoyable process without the stress of, of paying the money out uh, during the year. And also it allows for funders to have a more professional um, and ongoing process of giving that can be planned, that can be measured, that can be year to year, that can guarantee um, the impact of their donations. You can donate in Israel uh, a variety of assets. It can be cash, it can be stocks, it can be a building, it can be art. Um, we will have a conversation on how to um, sell your, um, your donation and make it uh, liquidated and make it cash and then open an account and give you the, the tax refund receipt. Um, another aspect that I want to share with you is what did we agree with the tax authority? What kind of a ruling did the, the tax authority gave us? Because there was a lot of discussion about that separation process of putting, donating the money to cash it and then uh, spending it uh, slowly during the year. There was some um, criticism that was made towards DAFs in the United States that there's not enough Payout. Although I believe it's not true, the research has showed that DAFs are, are really supporting at a high level and um, it's, it, the, the percentage of money that is being paid out to NGO is very, very high. Uh, you can also look at the numbers of JCF, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very high. So in order, that was the main cavity where we were having these conversations with the tax authority. So we agreed on a system of a three-tier approach. The small amounts of money you can open an account with Keshet for 50,000 shekels, which is a very small number. It's not just for ultra uh, wealthy uh, individuals, but up to 100,000 shekels, the money should go out within a year um, of the donation. Between 100,000 shekels and a million, the money should go out in five years. In that time, 
the money can be managed at the investment firm. All of the proceeds, all of the um, profit from those investments is tax free because Keshet is managing the money uh, and Keshet is a nonprofit organization, so there is, there is no tax on the earnings. And all of the profit from these investments goes directly to the account holder, which means each account has their own uh, growth. Um, over a million shekels, this is already can become an endowment if the donor chooses so. And the only requirement the tax authority has uh, given us is that there would be at least 5% uh, donation a year. And as you can tell, this is taken out of the family foundation model in, in, in America because of that minimum giving uh, a year. One last thing I want, want to say about the DAF model is that we, can, we have a, compared it to um, any other structure in Israel that allows you to uh, conduct your giving. So whether it's an NGO or an amuta or a public benefit company or what we call a trust in Israel, all of them by definition cost more, are more complicated. You have to report to the tax authority every year. There's a lot of paperwork and a lot of headache. Um, Keshet, Donor Advice Fund offers a very uh, unique model where you we take an, uh, an annual percentage for our administrative fee, 1% annually. If you choose to, to manage your money at a, an investment firm, there's an, an additional 0.5%. So overall, the cost of managing your account will only be 1.5%. Any other tool that we've examined during the last year was at least double that amount in terms of expenses. So it's a very, the cost effective aspect here is huge. Another element that is really unique is that you can remain anonymous if you want to, even in donations that are over 100K. Mostly in Israel, there's a law that you have to disclose who you are, but since the money goes through the DAF, you can make a decision whether you want a plaque with your name on the wall or you want to be anonymous. Any, any level of involvement that we encourage um, of the donor with the NGOs is accepted. So we want people to sit on boards. We want people to be active listening partners of their NGOs, but we want to save you the back office. We want to save you the headaches. We want to save you the paperwork. Uh, we want to be able to recommend NGOs to you if you, if you want that help. Um, and we just want you to enjoy the process of giving, which leads me to the aspect, to the different aspect of the donor advice fund being a fiscal agent for foundations, and Rafi and Adam will touch it more, um, for overseas foundations who run their Israel giving each year, there are a few aspects that I think are important to know about. Um, we do not aspire to replace staff. We want to be able to allow um, American foundations, also overseas foundations from other countries, to be able to have a smooth process of giving in Israel. And because of the transfer aspect of funds between the US and Israel, we have decided to, first of all, allow Keshet to have, we're in the process of setting um, an equivalency determination letter for Keshet so people can give directly uh, through their foundations and through their deaths to the Israeli um, to the Israeli um, NGOs um, and have an account in Israel that will, will simplify these processes and hopefully will also reduce um, the, the overhead or the, the expenses that are associated with these kinds of transfers. Um, by Rafi and, and uh, Adam will give you a more in-depth look into how, how they're doing it and why they have chosen to do it but it's definitely something for people to think about for two reasons. One, long-term projects, um, and also uh, multiple projects that happen during the year. If you have a building that you build that takes a long time, but you wanna transfer the money and only pay out by in benchmarks. If you want to use your disburs disbursement quota, but you wanna do it, you wanna make the decision about where to give later during the year. 
all of these aspects um, should be should make the DAF desirable for an overseas foundation to use in Israel. Um, I want to relate to one other issue, which is a second generation issue. Many, many funders that we've that we've met during the years at JFN have thought about how to build, how to give independence to their children in giving. A lot of times um, it requires uh, putting or adding them to a board, which is a big board or has a lot of people on it. So the tool of the donor advice fund gives second and third generation the independence needed to practice their own giving, to put in their own values, their own um, aspiration, and also teach them how to become smarter philanthropists and do it over time. So that aspect is also something that is very important for me to present because I think it's a really good tool to use. Um, one last thing about Keshet, we are a nonprofit public benefit company. Uh, we have assembled a board that I feel is extremely impressive. Maya Likornik, she was um, a partner at Meital. It's a law firm. It's one of the biggest law firms in Israel. She retired and chose Kesha to be her first chairmanship. Um, she seems very excited to build um, something that will help the infrastructure in Israel improve and allow for more Israelis to give and also for better giving and easier giving for funders from abroad. Um, Talia Ranadal, she used to be the head of the tax authority in Israel, now has a, a, her own uh, practice. Yoram Ariav used to be the head of the finance ministry. Rani Khadijia is a lawyer from Gornitsky. Vital Slavin has a, a family office called Beyond. Professor Neta Ziv is the head of the um, Institute for Law and Philanthropy at Tel Aviv University, which is a part of the ecosystem that supports uh, the establishment of the Donor Advice Fund and Scott Tobin from Battery Adventures. These people are all volunteers. They are supported. They are not being paid. They're not getting paid. They are supported by a group of volunteers on our committees. The audit committee headed by Professor Yair Ogle, he's from Tel Aviv University as well. We have an investment committee that supervises all of our investments at the different investment firms. Um, when we have multiple ones, it will be even crucial. They, um, they look over the invest investments and the investments policy. Um, and also we are um, accompanied by, like I said, thank you to Philip Weil before from Committed to Give and Dan Ariely, Professor Dan Ariely, who is working with us to really promote the spirit of giving and um, we, we also want to promote family giving in Israel and family values. Um, so Keshet can become not just a technical tool, but really a game changer um, in Israeli philanthropy. Um, I am the executive director of Keshet, managing director. Um, Ophir Katz is our legal advisor, and EY, Ernst & Young, is our accounting firm. So, like you can see, we have built a great leadership team to make sure that Keshet will be a sustainable um, company, I will say, for the benefit of the public. Um, we also are, we want to make sure that um, the knowledge of our ecosystem, JFN, the Institute for Law and Philanthropy, and Community to Give is transferred to new donors and for those who want an advice. Of course, that people who already know what they're looking for um, are able to enjoy a smoother process. Uh, we're not going to give advice to people who don't want uh, or don't need it. Um, but we definitely want to serve um, as a teaching body, as, as a platform that can introduce the wealth of Israeli NGOs to funders wherever they are in easy access to our technological platform that will allow all of us to, to, to give more and give better. Um, at this point, I want to stop the sharing of my screen. And I would like to give, I would like to hand over the mic to um, Rafi, I don't see you, but I'm sure you're here. 
uh, to Lafayette Long from the Harry and Janet Weinberg Foundation and to um, Adam Hertz from the Russell Bayer Foundation. Rossi? Yeah, Hineni, I'm here. Thanks. Thank you so much, Maya, for inviting me. Um, let me just say first, uh, it's nice to see many colleagues that I know, nice to see colleagues I don't know yet. Um, and I just want to wish everyone a Shana Tova and a healthy one because we need 5781 to be way better than we uh, So that being said, um, from, Maya's, um, from Maya's presentation, you can see that Keshet is going to be, is now, um, will be incredibly flexible, nimble, be able to do a lot of things for a lot of different um, donors and foundations. And that's really exceptional. It's really the exceptional, unusual um, that it's able to do that. For the Weinberg Foundation, we have very specific focused need that Kesha will be able to help us with. Um, just as a reminder, you know, um, the Weinberg Foundation does about 12 to $13 million a year in grant making in Israel, but we don't have an office, or it is actually, you're now looking at our Israel office. It just happens to be in Baltimore, Maryland. So um, in order to not, you know, and usually I'm in Israel three or four times a year, um, and obviously that's not the case now. Uh, we work very closely with JFN Israel in a lot of capacities, but certainly not in, um, certainly not in our, in, in extensively in our, our due diligence process or our allocation process. Um, and what, sh what Maya mentioned is that, um, you know, we, we won't be, we'll, we'll be very focused on it because we have three methods of payments uh, of, of, of the way we go about paying. The first is, and we have a preference in, for capital projects. So the first way we, we prefer to pay, we pay directly. We don't fund American Friends of, sorry. Um, we fund directly to Amutot. And I know Maya alluded to it, um, but opening a bank account in Israel if you don't have an office there is insane. It's absolutely bananas and bonkers. We tried for between a year and a half and two years to do it. This bank was too big. It's all from the money, money laundering from a few years ago between Russia and the United States that, that tried to do it. And I know many of you know this, but we tried the big banks, but they didn't trust us and we had an agenda. We were too big for the smaller banks. The whole thing was a balagan. So um, what we do is we require equivalency determination for, for NGOs, which is um, basically enables the equivalent for them to have the equivalent legal status of a 501c3 in the United States, which is important for us to be able to, to mark our grant making from a tax perspective. So that way we don't go through American Friends of, we fund them directly and we wire transfer, right? So we do that with most of our capital projects now. It's a process that takes like a, a, a month or so. When, when we don't have that option, we then go through via Roundup because we have a relationship with Roundup. And, and for, for smaller, more discretionary grants for us, 50,000, anything under 50,000 and under, we go if they're a Roundup approved Amuta, then we go through them. But that doesn't always help us because not everybody, not every Amuta goes, is Roundup um, approved or investigated per se. Um, so Kesha, what Kesha will enable us to do is we have several dozen discretionary grants annually um, that we will be able to just say, just, just roll in, send in $250,000, allocate Maya, please allocate to these seven Amutot, $25,000, you know, $30,000, whatever it is. It makes that process very, very streamlined. We are not per se interested in the donor advised component of the fund, even though it's terrific. But that's basically because we have an in-house investment team. I'm um, not even just a CIO, but a team of five. And so that's how we, we do our investing, right? So it's much more appropriate for, for many other um, funders and, and foundations. Um, it's just that it's, it's not what we need. That being said, Maya and her amazing team just said, what is it you need? And we talked about exactly what our needs were. We need to be able to get funding to an Amuta that might not have um, Nihul Takin, might not have, you know, might not have everything that they need to do. And by the way, we don't have staff on the ground, but, and, and 
Kesha will never replace our staff, no offense, but it enables me to save dozens and dozens of hours of, of due diligence, of, of, of basic things that are really at their fingertips because there's such a high level of excellence that I don't have to worry about which for me mitigates all the risk for our foundation and our trustees. And that's what's most important for me. So when we're not able to do the, you know, equivalency determination, we'll, we'll probably be, we'll be using Kesha a lot because it just makes it quick for these easier, smaller grants for us to, to use. Um, I would say, I think that's probably enough now. I've heard just about enough of my own voice. So I'm going to turn it over to Adam. Thank you, Rafi. Uh, and uh, good afternoon and good evening to the participants in Israel. It's great to see my friends and colleagues from uh, the Russell Berry Foundation and from the other JFN members. Um, we've been following, uh, together with Maya, the development of Keshet and the Donor Advised Fund for close to two years. And it's great to finally see it come in, into being. Uh, thank you for that, that uh, summary, Maya. Uh, of, uh, of the, the new program and, and Rafi, thank you for um, really getting to all the nuts and bolts of how a private foundation expects to benefit from the establishment of this fund. I'd like to share a uh, another perspective. Um, everything Rafi said is true. We hope to gain those efficiencies, but we have, uh, um, I think, a second agenda as well. Um, um, I'm always motivated by, by the words of our, our board president, Angelica Barry. So um, I want to begin with her words. Um, referring to our job as a private foundation during the period of COVID, Angelica said that our role in philanthropy is not just to give money, but to lead. And especially in times like this, when the, the need exceeds the capacity of any one giver to fill. And I, I believe Angelica is conveying that an important outcome from our work must be to inspire others to give. That's true. And at certain times, certain times call for us to give with our dollars to inspire, inspire others to do the same. But the giving equally means to lead in, in terms of actions with, with a skill set, with our collective expertise, with thought leadership. In, in times like these where the, the needs so far exceed the resources, we have to see our job as amplifying our giving and make an impact across the spectrum of its meaning. At our foundation, at the Russell Berry Foundation, uh, our trustees are, are committed to to fulfilling our role on both sides of, of this giving equation. Since the start of, of COVID, beyond our, our giving in the traditional giving areas, uh, our foundation has, has given over $3 million in Israel for emergency needs, for health and human resources, and, and medical innovation. Uh, on the other side of the equation, by partnering with, with Keshet in the Donor Advised Fund, our, our goal is to amplify our impact by, by supporting the creation um, of the ecosystem of action. Many of you who are familiar with the Russell Berry Foundation are aware that, that, that we, un, unlike uh, what Rafi described, we, we have a, a, a field, um, we field a team of experienced program experts in Israel. And, and we work with a network of grantees or among the best in Israel. But creating systemic change requires what Maya referred to as a philanthropic ecosystem that goes beyond the capacity of any single funder. We believe that at the foundation that a powerful way to accomplish the goal of creating this ecosystem is, is by lending our endorsement to the effort of developing an easier mechanism for organized philanthropy in Israel. The mechanism, um, no doubt, it is Keshet and, and the first uh, donor advice fund in, in Israel. And we, like Rafi explained, we, we expect to use the, the Israeli DAF 
much like foundations and individuals would use them here in the United States. As a, as a private foundation, uh, uh, the Rustleberry Foundation can deposit funds into the DAF. We can count the full value toward our charitable payout in the year of deposit. We can streamline record keeping and most importantly, retain full discretion over which Israeli nonprofits to grant from the fund over time. In addition to expediting our, our grant making in Israel and, and cutting administration time and labor, what we hope to achieve is, is so valuable and that it broadens our reach to fellow problem solvers and other experts we may never have gotten to know on our own. With an, an expanded fully vetted and ready to launch network of new grantees and leaders, we'll be able to augment our resources and make us better equipped to do our part to help, um, to, to help solve the, the challenges uh, facing Israel. Uh, we believe it will help us better access critical, critical expertise, startup nonprofits, programs operating maybe under the radar or with limited resources to reach funders like us. I think of Keshet as a potential matchmaker for us and other U US funders and, and certainly very relevant to this conversation and everything that Maya talked about, um, a potential matchmaker for would-be Israeli philanthropists. Um, I, I really think that, that Keshet and Jeff is, is making this happen. Um, and that said, I, I thank you all for your time. Feel free to reach out to me. I'll share my contact information on the chat. Feel free to reach out to me after Rosh Hashanah for any specific questions. And uh, of course, we'll, we'll, take, uh, we'll take questions now. Shana Tava to all.